Rule of School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to pre-order upcoming Force of Will sets, ccgprime.com for singles and supplies, cardodoco.com for those rulers in the international market looking for product, the Ruler School Circuit Series now taking orders on our quarter three 2024 circuit kits, and our guest lecturer members, Fight Ramen. Class is in session. Hey there guys, welcome back to another deck profile with yours truly, Paul Reisman. Today we are taking a look at my recent Utsune's list that was featured on the channel. This is a very complicated ruler, so I'm going to be doing a lot of reading of some of her cards, but I'm going to try and abbreviate where I can because this is probably one of the toughest deck building challenges I've ever had. So in a lot of ways it was very fun, but in a lot of ways I'm kind of glad I got to take a break. So let's just jump in to Utsune's Phosphorescent Priest. We're mostly going to be talking about the front side here because I'm not doing a lot of judgmenting of this ruler, although I can. Uh, there are capabilities in the deck to make this happen. So, uh, cards you control named Aradia, Heaven of Aeon, gain eternal. That'll carry over if you flip her, but she will also be gaining eternal on her judgment side. On both sides, you can use uh, green or time will to pay for one or the other. It's very helpful for being able to correct some of the stuff and also makes one of your time stones uh, more effective for you, which is really helpful. Whenever you play a card from your graveyard with a remnant, you draw a card. That's on both sides as well, and it's probably the most powerful effect on this card. Um, being able to just cantrip off of your remnants is incredible, and it goes a long way to making this one um, a ruler of, of interest uh, for me in particular. It really pushes the remnant uh, identity here. Uh, you can pay uh, green and time less to do judgment of this ruler, which is also pretty high. Three green and three time is pretty high, so you definitely want to discount her in some way. If a Remnatherian exists with a different name outside in your expelled area, which is not a zone, but it's at least outside of the game, um, you can do uh, a discounted judgment for her, which is really helpful. When you do flip her and you do get all of her stats and all the same abilities, you do get an additional effect of discarding a card to put a target resonator with a Remnatherian name uh, from your RFG into the field. And you can only do this up to twice per turn on your main timing. Not very relevant outside of the fact that you might be, you know, putting things in your RFG for some reason, which, you know, generally they're going to trigger and come into the field anyway, uh, unless by some other means. And so if they're kind of trapped out there, she gets them back into rotation, which is helpful. Probably the cornerstone of my list is Aradia Heaven of Aeon. Uh, this card has Forgotten Forest of Fossils in addition to its other names, which means your Titanophil is going to be able to search this. It doesn't have Mythic, Enter, or whenever a Resonator enters the field from your removed area, you cycle a card once per turn. You can tap this card to choose one of these abilities, your Time Beast, which is anything with uh, time in their attribute cost, they will gain Remnant. Uh, or, until end of turn, your opponent cannot cancel spells you control with Remnant. That's a little relevant, only if you're looking to just simply cast this card um, and not have it be canceled. Um, or your Distress Lupus, uh, sometimes that can be relevant. Um, that mode does sometimes, but very rarely come up. So don't forget that this uh, that mode exists. Uh, this is probably the cornerstone of your deck though, and Titanophil is gonna help you get it. It has Super Barrier, and then when it enters, remove all of the Resonators from the game. This is your big Wrath 1010 who comes in later in the game. You can cheat him out if you want to use some of your forgotten spells that have been RFG'd after the remnant has been used. Um, but if you need to look for those cards, Inheritance allows you to search for either Aradia, because it does have Forgotten Forest of Fossils in its name. Uh, it also allows you to look for the head, the torso, or the feet. Uh, the head is really solid because it allows you to buy something back and then fix your hand a little bit by removing the card in your hand from the, uh, from the game. Um, the uh, uh, torso here, <laughs> the rib cage. Uh, is going to allow you to do kind of like a mini GST uh, on one of your opponent's uh, entities sans a J ruler or a magic stone. Um, you also are going to be removing a card in your hand from the game, which can be helpful for, for various reasons. Um, but then the feet are going to be tutoring any Remnatherian from your deck and adding it to your hand. 
uh, and then you were going to be RFGing a card. So you're going to be looking at this Lupus to destroy your uh, additions that you need to have gone, or your Leo Aatrox, who is going to come in and get rid of a total two cost or less um, Resonator, which is sometimes really helpful, and he can even target himself to get himself expelled. Really useful for making Utsunes cheaper in the long run. Outside of all of the time stuff, which will be covered a little bit more in depth in the guide um, that is going to be coming out after this video, um, we're looking at the rest of this list. So I'm playing a couple of Falchion. I found that this deck really needed something that was going to be able to stick on the field, dodge mirror, but also be able to dodge uh, or discard things in your hand uh, that you didn't need anymore. Uh, for example, extra Remnithropos that you do not need in your hand can go into the graveyard to fuel Falchion's effects. Uh, you can also do that with any of these forgotten spells that love to be in the graveyard so Remnant can activate with them. These cards only cost one when you have your Fossil of Remnants because this, uh, essentially, once per turn, allows you to just pay two for anything with Remnant in your graveyard. Very helpful in that particular um, in that particular interaction. So having a way to discard cards from your hand is really helpful. I might even go up to three of this card, because this card is just that good in this list. Uh, really makes good use of the blue that you have access to with your Time Stone as well. Uh, I'm playing four Prissia. Um, Based on what Jeremy has told me in his playtesting, uh, most people do not mirror Prissia's Big Show, mostly because they think that there are other one-drops in the deck that effectively do more. Um, Big Show is essentially setting things up for later on, and so uh, it's not really as prime of a target for mirror as other things, although that could definitely be different depending on your match. But Big Show has been resolving for me relatively easily, relatively well. And then uh, when Prissia comes in, she gets to search for a lot of different cards in the deck itself, including if you get it, if you get high enough with her big show count, you can just run Nethropos from the from the deck, which is really really good. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at Spirit of Storms. This is a really good spirit that can come in from the deck, pop a couple of things, draw you an extra card, and then act as a flyer. Uh, to put your opponent on a clock that way. This also dodges Mirage Spirit, which is one of Jeremy's suggested cards. This card is really solid for that particular reason. You can blow up things, and if your opponent is trying to respond, um, you can just um, pivot with your Prisia and go into Spirit of Storms instead to pop some stuff, which is really helpful. Playing for Lorite because it's a green deck, and I think this is probably a staple green card in any green control list. And now we're getting into the Derek Mugwaneza inspired <laughs> version of the uh, part of this deck. So this uh, chunk of the deck comes from um, a list that Derek Mugwaneza ran in the Minnesota GP. Definitely look and check that out uh, down in the comment or down in the um, uh, description below. There is uh, our website will have the list that inspired this portion. But he was playing three Replicant Kagia as a way of. Um, stifling the opponent. He was also playing some Swords of Progression. Really helpful if you don't have Remnant Throbos in your hand turn one. This is just a good way of walking your opponent back and bouncing certain cards back to your hand, which might be really useful if you want to reuse Perseus, Falchions, etc. Um, he was also playing three Liberation of the Winds alongside some uh, Conflict of Body and Soul. Uh, however, that card is banned, so I don't really know how to <laughs> do anything else in this deck outside of that. Um, so instead, we are playing a Solaria's Wind as a means of protection. Um, this can be somewhat useful. I'm actually thinking about replacing this with uh, setting the stage for Providence, just because I think it might go a little bit farther. But for this version of the deck, it was really useful to kind of fuel the RFG um, and be able to um, set things up to either buy things back or even to just tuck things uh, with Liberation of Wind. It was really helpful for that particular reason. Playing one Mew staring at, because this card is already really good, and if it, it would be even better if it drew you a card. Oh wait, we're playing Utsune's. You can just draw a card if you play this from the graveyard. Very helpful. Alongside Girl staring at to unlock the field, uh, Ray Asnable, even though we're not seeing a lot of him right now, uh, he can uh, just hurt this deck because we are doing a lot of inner abilities, so I just wanted a one card answer to him. Um, might go up to two with this. It felt very solid and just like a really decent card, especially late in the game. Magic Stones include four Magic Stone of Knowledge. This deck goes late enough into the game where this card feels very consistent, and I didn't want to play Moonshades 
for fear that burn would uh, for sure get me. So this card felt really solid and it felt really good to dig out of the dig out of the card pool again. We talked about Fossil of Remnants. We're playing three. This essentially turns all of your uh, two cost remnant spells into a one cost because you're only tapping one stone. Very helpful. Um, also dodges mirror, which is really great because you're still producing two will and you're still casting a two cost, but you're only doing it for one stone. Very great. Also means that your Titanophil's coming out on turn four instead of turn five uh, can be pretty relevant. Then we're playing three of the Magic Stone of Time. Uh, again, this allows you to go into blue um, and it makes the um, essentially makes the control deck a control deck. So that's really helpful because you're including the blue in this. Your side deck is going to be one Replicant Shiva. This card is definitely staple in this deck because it allows you to uh, utilize solarization really well. It also is a turn three pushback so that uh, if you do not feel comfortable playing Remnithropos or Titanophil, this basically says uh, you have to answer me or I'm just gonna run away with the game. Cards are very solid, um, just makes your, your, your board absolutely massive and very, very solid. Um, Replicant Shiva, very good in this list. Uh, other side deck options, um, basically just looking for ways to utilize the remnant capabilities of things like destruction of the portal so that I not only uh, get rid of problematic additions, but I also draw additional cards. And then some sort of aggro um, interaction, uh, this might even just turn into something completely different, but um, we're not seeing a lot of uh, ground aggro, we're seeing a lot of burn aggro right now. These are some other cool ideas. You can pause the video and take a look at those. There's some things I've been messing around with, just trying to see what can I do with this list. There's some really cool stuff you can certainly do here, um, but I haven't quite figured out what else I want to do with this. This ruler is very interesting, so definitely check out the guide that is coming out after this video. Uh, this deck was a lot of fun, but also really hard to pilot, so if you're in for a good challenge, uh, this uh, this deck can be um, really fun to play. So, guys, this has been Paul with another deck profile, and until next time, class is dismissed.